Alrighty, how's it going everybody? I have a new battery to talk to you about today and this is the Group 24 size Watt Cycle 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's a 12.8 volt battery which will give you 1280 watt hours of total nominal capacity. So this is a good battery for something like a trolling motor, marine electronics, maybe an RV application, some solar systems, a trolling motor for like a kayak because it's a Group 24 size. So let's touch on that here real quick. So the Group 24 size is a little bit smaller than your typical like 100 amp hour or even like a marine deep cycle battery. Uh, most of those are like a Group 27 or a Group 31. And what that means is kind of like the overall package of the battery is what a Group size means. Since it's a 24, it's about two inches shorter than a Group 31, which is typically what you'd find in like a boat application. So you're able to save a little space there. It is a very compact battery. It's only 23 pounds on my scale, so you're getting a lot of power out of this for a very little amount of weight. If you were to compare this to like a deep cycle lead acid battery, those are only good for about 50 amp hours, about a 50% effective discharge rate. And these are getting full 100 amp hours out of it. So you're getting double the power at about half the weight when you go to a lithium iron phosphate battery. One of the other benefits that you can consider with the, this chemistry of a battery is the cycle life. So an LFP battery or lithium iron phosphate is good for about 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. So fully discharging it, fully charging it, you know, about 4,000 times. And the cycle life gets better from that point if you don't discharge it as deeply. So if you only want to use 60% of the battery, your cycle life just goes through the roof and you'll, you'll end up aging out the battery rather than cycling out the battery, which is not the case for like a lead acid. A uh, lead acid battery is only good for 250 up to 500 cycles, depending on how it's stored and how it's used. So you're getting a huge bump in cycle life with one of these and how long you can use your battery for. So back to some of the specs of the battery. It is rated for a continuous 1C discharge rate. 1C is 100 amp hours. So you can pull 100 amps continuous out of this battery. I think it's good for about 300 in like a surge load. So if you were to pull more than that for two seconds or five seconds, it will give you a little bit more energy than that, but that continuous load is usually what you're looking for, and that's 100 amps out of this battery. When it comes to charging this battery, it will take 100 amps of charging, but good luck finding a charger to do that. So the rated charge rate is about a 0.2C, so 20 amps would be a kind of a typical target range for a charge rate. You can go down from there if you needed to, find something a little more reasonable or cost conscious, 15 amps, 10 amps. I'd really not want to go less than five amps just for the duration of charge and maybe let's touch on that for a minute so how long will it take you to charge this battery so let's just say you fully deplete it you suck 100 amps out of it and you need to put it back in there if you have a 20 amp charger that math 20 times 5 will get you back to 100 amps if you have a 10 amp charger it'll take you 10 amps 10 hours to charge it not 10 amps and if you have a one amp charger it'll take you 100 hours to charge a battery so you definitely want to keep up your charge rate to give you a reasonable amount of uh, charge time when you fully deplete the battery or when you partially delete it. It just kind of factors into the whole system. So speaking of pulling energy out of this battery, I did my typical uh, 10 amp load test on it. So what I do is I fully discharge a battery, fully charge it with a lithium iron phosphate rated charger and then pull a constant 10 amps on the battery and measure how much comes out of it. Uh, this is actually one of the very highest batteries that we pulled out. Not quite the highest, but it's very close. We pulled a full 106 amp hours out of this battery. So when you're doing your math, you can comfortably say you've got 100 amp hours to play with and you got a little bit more headroom on top of that. So if you're trying to calculate your runtime or your fish finders or your trolling motor or whatever that may be, you can count on that 100 amp hours to be there for you if you were to use this battery. So this battery does have the typical battery management system in it. So it's gonna handle uh, your battery cell balancing, your over temperature, your low temperature, protections. It's going to have short circuit protection. If you cross your wrench or something, hooking it up, it will cut itself out. But this one also features low temperature charging protection, which is a starting to become more common, but it is not across the board. And what that does is that gives you the ability to hook up a charger to this battery while it's frozen and not damage it. And so this BMS will say, hey, I'm too cold. Don't take a charge until I get warm again. And that's, that's a feature you want, depending on what part of the country you live in. You probably don't need it in Florida, but if you live you know, up north or something like that, even, even here in Texas, we get cold enough in certain periods. Uh, low temperature protection just kind of gives you that peace of mind to leave your charger plugged in if you wanted to and go ahead and uh, not damage your battery. 
does come with a five-year warranty from WattCycle. So they'll take a look at when you purchase the battery and you have a five-year warranty based off of that. And if you're wondering how this battery stacks up against other batteries within this price range, check out this video right here. We'll see you next time.